Well, hello, and long time no see. In case you've forgotten, my name is Brother Casey Cole, and I'm on a little 9,000 mile mission tour across the country this summer. Just taking about a week off with my parents, relaxed and ready to get going again. Just arrived at my eighth stop of the summer, St. Francis of Assisi Church in Raleigh, North Carolina. What do you say we go set up? And there we go, all ready to go. Now omitted from this video was me carrying two boxes of books at a one time from across the street where I pulled a hamstring in my back and now I'm all sweaty, but oh well. Books are set up, got about 15 minutes to get ready for mass, ready to go. All right, ready to go, all vested, just need a microphone, ready for the mass. And I gotta say, it's a weird feeling going from a vacation to mass. I've been sleeping in all week, been doing absolutely nothing, very different mindset, and now I'm just thrust into the mass. This has happened three times before, the very first week, the week after John's ordination, and now. And the first two times, I was just not ready. It's not that I wasn't prepared, it just wasn't mentally ready. And it's not that I'm nervous, it's actually the opposite. I feel no nervousness at all, and it's just gonna hit me all at once. So, it'll be all right, I took a few minutes in the chapel, prayed, centered myself, let God be God. And so that'll be what we do today, ready to go. All right, first mass down and oh my gosh, this is a big parish. You saw the little clips before how full it was. Yeah, well that was like 10 minutes before mass started. By the time we were to the first reading, the place was absolutely packed. To give you a sense of scale, we had 16 chalices. 16 chalices for a Saturday vigil mass. There are churches in this country that don't use 16 chalices all weekend, let alone for the vigil mass. That is what a 5,000 family parish looks like. It is an absolute mega church. Of course, making a church is more than just getting lots of people there, and in this case, I thought the music was great, the servers were on point, and it just seemed like everyone was taking control of their faith and making it their own. Everyone wanted to be there, and this was a well-oiled machine. And I gotta say, I thought my homily was pretty good too. But of course, the liturgy is not a performance. Unless we forget that, I'm reminded of an experience I had a number of years ago. You see, we have this friar who is, how shall we say, homiletically challenged. He's just a terrible homilist. And yet I met this woman who said that he changed her life one time with a homily. And I thought, him? That guy? No, no, he is terrible. He can't even string words together. But you see, I was judging him. I was judging the experience based on human standards. My scale was very different because I thought it was about me and my performance, about the musician, how we win awards and get clapping. But it's not about any of that. It's about God and what God is doing in us. And so, you know, sometimes I can give the perfectly precise homily, the best words and vocabulary, a performance worth recording, and it may touch no one. And yet, sometimes you may give a pretty subpar homily and change lives. For me, this is not a means to not put work in or to not try, but just to remind us what really matters, God. It is the liturgy is about him, and not about our performance. So you would think two hours between a mass would be enough, but when the scale is this large, it's just a never ending cycle. The 7.30 mass, you know, the small mass of the day, had 12 chalices. I mean, it had 500, 800 people. The church was almost full for 7.30. 
and then we leave and we've got to talk with everyone and people want to sign books and it's amazing chaos and before you know it the next team is moving in and they're already setting up i got about 10 minutes to eat a banana between the the masses it's about uh 11 o'clock got uh, 11 o'clock mass coming up it's good life i'm ready to go so here we go so I was on Twitter the other day and I saw a post that was kind of interesting. It said, write one thing about your job that most people don't know. And it was fascinating to read the responses about jobs I thought I knew, but how different they are for the people actually living and working them. Naturally, this made me think about our lives as Franciscans, particularly as priests, and one thing came to mind. We work more than just Sundays. And in fact, Sundays can be some of our lightest days. While Sundays are definitely the hardest day of the week for me this summer, preaching four, five, sometimes even six homilies in a day, that is not indicative of the rest of my life as a priest. For the most part, parishes have two, three, sometimes even four priests, which means at most that you'll have two or three masses to celebrate. The rest of the time is spent in the gathering space greeting people, maybe having a meeting here and there, but for the most part, Sundays are not our hardest day at all. What people often forget is that the church is alive and at work seven days a week, not just on Sundays. There's social services, sacramental prep, we've got staff meetings and finance meetings and pastoral council meetings, spiritual direction, meeting people where they are. Sometimes we're called away to emergencies, to hospitals and prisons, celebrating the mass and other sacraments. Sometimes a Tuesday can go from nine in the morning until 10 at night. And so, yeah, Sundays can be exhausting and a lot to do, but often other days of the week have a lot more work. So yeah, something you probably didn't know about priests is something that's helpful in discernment to realize that our life is much more than Sundays, that it's actually all throughout the week doing many, many different things. Also, I fixed my Bible, glued it back together, so uh, that's pretty cool. And uh, now I've got to go to preach of the mass, so without further ado. All right, so fifth time is the charm. The first four have gone great. We got the last one today, the 5.30, and I gotta say, I'm excited, I'm ready to go. At the same time, the pizza has been ordered, and I, I'm a little distracted, because I'm thinking about dinner right now. We'll have to put that off a little bit, quiet the stomach, get this last one out of the way, serve the people of God, here we go. All right, check it off, another successful Sunday done. No casualties, no major blunders, we made it through. And I gotta say, now that this is the eighth time I've done this, there is still one thing that I am just still not comfortable with, and that's signing my autograph. Ugh, it's just such a weird image to be signing my autograph as a Franciscan. Aren't I special? Don't you want to know me? I get it. It's nice for people, and it's a very intimate moment to have a conversation, but it just feels strange. And I gotta say, after doing it 309 times a day, I just forget how to sign my name. It just seems so awkward now. Anyway, back to the friary, getting some pizza, and we've got some special things planned for tomorrow, so you come right back. So for the last couple weeks, we've been on a bit of a homecoming tour, visiting the places I used to live and work, my homes away from home. Well, this week we've got a special treat in that we are in my hometown, and this is my actual home when I had a home. Although it was pink when my family lived here. Right around the corner is my old high school where I was held cap, earned a great education for many years. It's where I spent the vast majority of my time either in the classroom or on the baseball field. When I wasn't there, I was here where I worked for three months until I quit. Before getting a job here, cleaning tables and bringing people food, although it had a different name back then. This is where my life was forever changed, where I first became an active Christian and thought about ministry in the church. And this is where I kissed my high school girlfriend for the first time on a youth group retreat, but shh, don't tell anyone, I might get in trouble. And just across the street, touching my old neighborhood, is the park where we used to walk our dog, the lake in which I dropped my first cell phone trying to get into a canoe, and the place where I once played a giant 50-person game of Capture the Flag at night. And really, as strange as it sounds, these places mean very little to me because really they're just places. My family has since moved to a different city, I've lost contact with many of my friends, my dog is in doggy heaven, and my girlfriend, well, she dumped me. Twice. So, yeah. And while this might seem sad that none of these places mean anything to me anymore, it's also pretty fitting for my life. As friars, we are called to be itinerant, to have no attachments in this world, to go where we're needed. While we're in one place, we can easily make it our home, but we also recognize that there's a new home out there ready to be made in the future. 
And that new home for me, at least for the next couple days, is here at St. Francis of Assisi Church in Raleigh, where I'll be speaking in about 20 minutes. So, gotta cut this short. I will definitely show you the church and the grounds tomorrow, so don't go anywhere. All right, you still with me? I hope so, because it is now a hot and humid Tuesday afternoon, and we have one more thing to do before we can wrap up this video. We've gotta get a tour of the church. But as you can imagine, with a parish community this size, we're talking about more than just the sanctuary. This is an entire campus. You have never seen a church like this. And that is a wrap. It is like 93 degrees out here. I'm sweating like a pig. I gotta get back to the friary, wash my habit for tonight's talk. But I hope you had fun seeing some of my old stomping grounds, seeing this wonderful parish. And I will catch you next week in Triangle, Virginia.